Hi there! In today's video, I'll show you my painting process for my watercolor sketchbook. Today, I'm going to paint pink flowers and a hummingbird. I'm using two reference photos for this painting, and I'm going to link them in the description box below. As you can see here, I'm roughly sketching the flowers. I sketch the flowers by drawing very simple shapes, in this case circles, then I'm adding petals, stems, and leaves. In other words, I'm designing the layout. If I were to do a big painting not in my sketchbook, I would do a detailed sketch with the pencil first and then transfer it to the watercolor paper. But here I'm drawing straight on watercolor paper, but very lightly. For my hummingbird, I'm doing the same thing, drawing lightly simple shapes, adding details, and erasing any extra pencil marks. Here I'm just fixing any issues that I see with my drawing and adding more details. So I'm going to pick out the colors that I would like to paint with and then I'll tell you all about them. For the flowers, I'm going to use three main colors. They're called Matter Lake Red Light, Carmen, and Violet Pink. If you'd like to match the colors, two of the colors are cool red pinks and the last color is violet, so it's more on the light purple side. So here I'm just swatching the colors so you can see how they look like on white paper and when diluting the water. For my yellows, I'm going to use Maples Yellow and Cadmium Yellow Medium. I'm going to mix them together to create this nice yellow color. For my greens, I'm going to use an indigo color, which is a grayish blue color and also green, but I would say this green is more on the warm side. And lastly, for the third color, I would like to use a sap green, and I'm going to create it by mixing green with cadmium yellow and yellow ochre. Before I start painting, I'm going to take my big eraser and lightly erase dark pencil lines. The reason I do that is because I don't want the pencil drying to clash with my watercolor layers. Since watercolor is translucent, the dark pencil lines will bleed through the paint and can even make the painting muddy. I start my painting by doing a wet on wet technique. Initially, I'm going to do the background of the flowers. I grab each pigment with a very wet paintbrush. This allows me to create translucent layers. It's always a good idea to start with translucent transparent layers and then build the layers to darker colors. Also, as you can see, I use the pink color in my background. This pink will unify the composition when I'll paint my flowers. For the flowers, I'm painting with multiple layers, starting with very light pink wash and then darkening each petal with violet and dark pink. Since the paper is so pretty wet, the colors move freely and create these beautiful soft shapes. Initially for the hummingbird, I wanted to use the same colors I'm using for the flowers, but I really want to use a brighter blue and I need a brown. So I'm going to add an ultramarine and violet hues to the palette, as well as sepia for the brown color. Thank you. 
Now that my first layer of paint is done and the paper is pretty much dry, I'm going to start adding details to the painting with a wet on dry technique. I also created a darker pink color by mixing indigo with violet and pink. I'm going to use the color for my shadow area on the petals and wherever I need the contrast. So what I'm doing here is I'm painting the darker shapes that I see in my reference photo and then I'm softening the edges of the clean wet brush. Or I'm adding drops of water to the paper and pushing the colors into it. For my first flower that is sitting on the top, I decided to keep it somewhat abstract. So I'm not going to add more details to it, but just a little bit of shapes to give it the look of a flower. Alright, so before I finish embellishing the flowers with more details, I'm going to work on my hummingbird. I'm incorporating the same green, yellow, and indigo I used in my flowers, but I'm also using a little bit of green and purple from the pan. The pigments are so bright that they make my bird glow, and that's the effect that I want to get. I'm also using sepia, my cool brown, to paint the wings. Since I want the bird to hover over the flower, I don't really emphasize the edge of the wings, but instead I let the paint thin out into the background. So here you can see that I'm painting additional leaves and plants to unify the painting. Otherwise the flowers and the bird look like they're from a separate composition. Also I would like to note that if it looks like I'm using black to darken my shadows, that's not true. I'm actually using indigo color, not black, and again I'm using the color in multiple places to unify the artwork. To paint the last finishing touches to the painting, mostly the tall grass and other details, I'm using the thinnest brush I have. It's called a liner brush and has very long bristles and makes it really easy to create thin lines.
course I can continue painting and include even more details. And painting artwork is never done. But I think for now this is good and I would like to conclude my tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more art and craft videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!